Hello, my name is Lachlan Pragnall, and today I will be doing a presentation on the causes of the First World War. Here we can see the four main causes of World War I. We have militarism, alliances, imperialism, and nationalism, and this can be remembered with the acronym MAIN, so the main causes. It is important to remember at this time period, Europe was very much a powder keg of feuds and tensions, and that inevitably war was probably going to occur. What it really just needed was a spark to set it all off. The spark that started World War I occurred on the 28th of June, 1914. A 19-year-old Yugoslav nationalist by the name of Gavrilo Princip shot and killed the Austrian Archduke Franz Ferdinand and his wife Sophie as they rode around in a car in Sarajevo. Princip was a Bosnian Serb who was fighting for Slavic independence from Austria-Hungary. Sarajevo was a city in the Balkans that at the time was under the control of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. As a result of this assassination, Austria-Hungary invaded Serbia, and in retaliation, Russia invaded Austria-Hungary. Soon enough, Germany, Britain, and France all entered the fray, setting the stage for World War I. So the first cause of World War I we'll be looking at is militarism, which can be defined as a state emphasis on military force and armament. At the turn of the 20th century, tensions in Europe were rising, and nations wanted better defence against their neighbours. Between 1870 and 1940, every European power except Great Britain had doubled the size of their armies. Universal conscription became quite commonplace in a number of European countries, and nations began competing in arms races over military size and strength. An example of this was a naval arms race between Germany and Britain. By 1914, both countries had nearly 50 battleships between them, highlighting the rapid growth of militarism throughout Europe. Another cause for the First World War was the alliances that had been set up throughout Europe. The two major sides during this time period was the Triple Alliance, with Germany, Austria, Hungary and Italy, and the Triple Entente, with Great Britain, France and Russia. The alliance system had been set up to ensure that no one country had the balance of power. However, an inherent fault that lay within the system was that once two countries entered a conflict, the others would have to enter as well. Following the assassination in Sarajevo, a domino effect of nations occurred as more and more countries entered the war, proving that the alliance system only further fueled the tensions and divides within the continent. Another major cause of the First World War was imperialism. This was done as an extension of a nation's power through colonisation of other foreign lands. This was often done to help build wealth through foreign labour and resources, as well as extending a nation's sphere of influence to help educate the of supposedly uncivilised non-European nations. The hunt for world domination obviously led to a number of conflicts. One of these conflicts can be seen with the Moroccan crisis in 1906, when Germany intentionally undermined the French control in Morocco to increase their sphere of influence and to improve their financial interests in the region. Here is a map of the empires at the turn of the century. It is interesting to look at um, Britain's sphere of influence and then also Germany's limited one in Africa. Finally, another cause for the First World War can be attributed to the rise of European nationalism at the beginning of the 20th century. Newly unified nations, such as Germany and Italy, were keen to assert themselves as European powers, and this was felt by a number of other nations throughout the continent. Nationalist political movements were also undertaken by a number of ethnic groups throughout Europe, who are hoping to assert their own independence. This can be seen with the Czechs, Slovaks and Serbians in the Balkan region. Nationalism was often displayed through acts of imperialism and militarism, indicating its importance to the origins of World War I. To finish up, here are a few of my concluding points on the presentation about the causes of World War I. I'd like to thank you for listening and watching. And if you have any questions or comment, please leave them in the section below. Thank you very much.